Hi, what I have on the workbench today is a Kaiwitz soldering iron. Kaiwitz sent me this one for a review. I haven't reviewed a soldering iron for a while, so in this video, let's take a look at this one together. And as usual, I will leave a product link in the video description below for those who are interested in getting one after watching this video. The one they sent me is a kit. Besides the usual stuff, you also have a charger and some spare soldering iron kits. I believe they actually have two different SKUs. One is what I have here, the other one is just for the soldering iron itself, which is sold as KETSO2D. And that one is actually what the link Kaiwitz shared with me links to. So if you need the kit, including the charger, just make sure you get the KETSO2 instead. The soldering iron is currently sold at around $35, which is quite affordable. And the full kit, like the one I have here, costs roughly $30 more. Anyway, you can see that we have different tips supplied with the soldering iron here. Personally, my favorite is either chiseled or beveled. By the look of it, we don't have a chiseled tip included in the set. Anyway, the one that is currently on the soldering iron is a small beveled one, and I will leave it on for our testing later. Now, I'm not that familiar with the different types of soldering iron tips. But the one used in the Kaiwitz KETSO2 is not a TS or T12 type. I have a TS type here. You can see that this is a slightly different size, but the contact patterns look pretty much identical. But the TS one is a little bit short past the metal stop here, so it won't fit anyway. Now, I don't have a T12 tip, but T12 is a little bit longer and has two of these rings instead of one. Potentially it could fit, but I haven't tried it yet. Anyway, looks like Highweeds branded soldering iron tips are readily available, so the interchangeability shouldn't be a problem. One nice touch of this soldering iron is that it actually has a cap. I actually like this a lot, especially for a portable one, as it can be carried around easily when the iron is still hot. You don't want to touch it when it's hot, so you can, the idea is that you can put the cap on, and of course the cap twists tight so it won't come loose in your pocket. This case and the cap are made of aluminum. The USB-C cable provided here is quite thick, but it is very soft. And the connectors themselves are quite interesting looking. These are a little bit chunky. At first I thought they are some kind of a locking mechanism inside, but uh, by a closer look, it really isn't any. My next thought is that this design may add some additional rigidity and protection. Well, there is a little bit of recess at the end of this uh, soldering iron connector here, you can see, but it doesn't really add too much protection as the recess is not deep enough. You can see here, I plugged it in and it barely cleared the connector here. It doesn't go deep enough for the casing to provide any protection if you wiggle the cable around. Now, if they extended the tube for another three to five millimeters, I think you will get additional protection from this connector design. Anyway, really just nitpicking here. You can always use your own cable if you don't like the store supplied one. All right, let's plug it in. Oh, by the way, this soldering iron can be powered by either a PD compatible USB power source, or it can be powered by a standalone power supply. Of course, you will have to have a USB-C connector. Now, this is quite convenient as you can easily whip up a power supply if you have a 9 to 20 volts source and some spare USB cable. Let me show you here. I used the same setup to test the PTS200 soldering iron a while ago. This USB cable is hooked up directly to a variable power supply. As you can see here, we only soldered the positive and negative onto this USB-C connector here. So anyway, let me power it on and we'll see. Now, the power supply is set as 19 volts. So let me plug it in. And you can see that we are able to power up the soldering iron here. No problem at all. So this is not a PD compatible USB cable. For the review, I'm going to use the stock USB cable. Let me connect it here. When you first connect, it is in standby mode and you can get to the manual settings by press both of these arrow keys together. So let me zoom in a little bit more. Let's uh, take a look at some of the menu items. As you can see, most of the settings are pretty intuitive. You can adjust the brightness and there's no reason for us to adjust it. Of course, if you want to adjust it, all you do is long press the button 
and uh, you will come into the setting here so you can adjust the brightness of the screen here so let's just leave it as a uh, default and we long press it again we go back to the main menu here so let's see what the next is we can calibrate and the idea here is if you have a accurate source you can measure the temperature of the tip and you can store some offset in the setting here to compensate the actual temperature anyway so let's go next temperature unit you can set to celsius or fahrenheit sleep time sleep temperature child lock so the idea of the child lock is uh, to prevent your kids from accidentally powering it on and i think when it's enabled you have to press the key three times in order to power on the soldering iron let's see next ah this is for if you are left hand right hand that adjusts the display which is kind of nice next voltage select one neat feature of the ketso 2 is that you can set the operating voltage here so let me just press it again you'll see that right now we have a choice of 9 12 15 and 20. and the idea here is that if you have a pd usb charger that can only output say 45 watts instead of the 65 watts required you can lower the operating voltage so you don't overburden your power adapter now let's take a look at this a little bit closer and to demonstrate i just hooked up a usb tester you can see right now we're reading the input voltage is 20 volts so let me adjust the voltage here you can see that right now we are setting it to 15 volts and the input voltage drops to 15 volts and if we do 12 volts again the input voltage drops to 12 volts and 9 volts so this feature is definitely helpful if you don't have a power supply that can deliver the required 65 watts output power and those are the settings on this soldering iron all right let's power it on and do some real world testing for that i'm going to remove the cap let me power it on it heats up relatively quickly and right now the operating temperature i'm setting is at 320 degrees and i can press these uh, buttons to change the setting here so i'm just going to leave it as 320 as that's the temperature i typically use i don't have a soldering iron tip thermometer because i never had a need to know the precise temperature setting hand soldering is quite forgiving and you will know what the right temperature range is pretty quickly after some practice so as long as the control loop is stable and the temperature doesn't jump around it should be fine now you could use a thermal camera to test the temperature but to get an accurate reading it is quite tricky as the measure temperature depends on the emissivity of the material and depending on whether or not the soldering tip is new or used and because of that the emissivity can change quite a bit here i cheated a little bit and i just did an emissivity on this thermal camera so i can get a reading close to what is shown on the soldering iron here so let me see here as you can see it's roughly reading about 312 313 degrees what i'm trying to show you is the stability of the temperature and the relative temperature changes so you can see that the temperature is quite stable so let me just adjust the iron temperature and you can see on the ir imager here so let's for example let's uh, increase to 360 And you'll see that the temperature roughly reached 360 degrees and let's change it back to let's say uh, 240 of course it's going to take a while for the temperature to drop but nevertheless you can see that the control loop is quite stable so actually let's uh, just wait for a few minutes And you can see that we're at 240 degrees thereabout no issues at all the point i'm trying to make here is that the temperature control is very stable here so for our first test let's solder a row of headers onto this protoboard here so let me do that here 
I'm going to zoom it in so we can see it a little bit better. By the way, right now the soldering temperature is 320. So I just want to get one on so I can fix it in place. As you can see, it came out pretty well here. And now let's see what a 65 watts iron can do. Here I have a switching power supply module. It has a lot of thick traces and large thermal mass components on the other side. So let's uh, give it a try here. Let's start with a thinner trace. Right now the temperature is set to, as you can see, the temperature is still set at 320. So we have no problem working on this trace here, you can see that. And uh, let's try a thicker one, let's go straight to this one. And we still have no issues at all here. So let's uh, move closer to the actual soldering point on this large transformer. And this is where it would require a lot of uh, power here. And you can see that we are struggling to melt the solder here, but eventually we are able to. Now, if we uh, just increase the temperature, let me increase it to 380. Let's uh, take another look here. Oh yeah, no problem as you can see. So this soldering iron, you definitely can use it to work on pretty much any circuit board that you have. And you can see there really isn't any issue soldering these kind of uh, large soldering points here. Now it would be nice if we have a dedicated boost button so we can temporarily elevate the temperature instead of uh, permanently set it. But nevertheless, this is not really an issue here. So let me set it back to 320. Now, after I have powered it on for a while, the soldering iron does become a little bit warm to the touch. Anyway, that pretty much wraps up this video. Personally, I don't have any issue with this soldering iron. Its longevity, though, remains to be seen. But the initial impression I got is quite good. If you are interested, please check out the link in the video description below. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked the video, please remember to give it a big thumbs up. And remember to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. I will catch up to you next time.